Hey everybody, John with Owl. I am at a beautiful undisclosed camping spot in the middle of Moab and that is the Owl Ultimate Revel. You'd be hard pressed to find folks that don't want to go on an adventure in this and maybe you just picked up your first Sprinter van. So what I want to do is talk about the five things you need to do to your Sprinter that you may not even know about right now. I've been doing this for a while and there's a few things that make this vehicle go from awesome to even awesomer, if that's a word. <laughs> Okay, number one, fuel tank. Fuel tank? Who changed the fuel tank on a vehicle? It's odd. These things are heavy. They're awesome, but they're heavy, and they suck fuel. And you have a standard tank that is just too small, especially on long trips. You know, you get these vans all built out, and you're going in the middle of nowhere. You need to have extra fuel. Besides, your heater runs off fuel, or off of diesel. You got to have extra fuel. And one of the best additions we have for these is an extended range fuel tank. All of the things I'm going to talk about today are items that when customers do this, and when they make these changes, they're like, I will never go back to the van before I made these changes. So, upgraded fuel tank. Let's go find that fuel tank. Fuel door right here, going under the van. It's muddy, hey, we have fun with these things. So there, back there is a fuel tank. Water tank, fuel tank. You see how long it is. So the cool thing about the fuel tank, it doesn't really change anything. It's just longer. This is a Revel. I think I want to say this has like a 42 gallon extended fuel tank. If you have a regular Sprinter, I believe you can get up to a 45 gallon fuel tank. It's an absolute no brainer if you're going to go on adventures. Now, the next thing you want to worry about is suspension. Now, this is something that a lot of people may be used to with off-road vehicles, Jeeps and that kind of thing. Why do we want to do suspension? I've talked a lot about this in other videos. And if you want to learn more about suspension, I encourage you to go watch those videos. I'm gonna take a sneak peek in here. See that really dirty shock? That's a Van Compass Falcon adjustable piggyback reservoir shock. We'll go in front. Cool thing about the suspension, it's adjustable right here so that you can adjust it for on-road or off-road. And that's really important, but I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty of why you wanna make a change to your suspension or should I say, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of why or how suspension works, but what I want to explain in the high level is that when these things get built out, they're undersprung and they don't have enough shock reservoir volume. And so what happens is that spring collapses, you're riding on your bump stops. And when you're riding on your bump stops, the van has a very uh, wallowy and harsh feel all at once. The van is going to sway side to side a lot. You're going to get your uh, wind assist triggered a lot, which is pretty terrifying when you're on the road. So what you got to do is add more spring rate in the rear. We do that with either an Adelie for a full replacement pack. And then you're adding some adjustable off-road shocks and they, you see the factory shock is still there and there's the additional piggyback reservoir. It's going to keep your shock fluid cooler when you're going on washboard roads. It's going to keep the van stable on the road, on ramps, driveways, everything. Trust me, do some research. Suspension on these things is pretty much life-changing. We recommend the Van Compass 4.3 or 6.3 if you want a lift. So we've addressed the fuel. We've addressed the suspension. See the logo right there? These things, when they get built out, tend to be a little sluggish. And so what happens is by adding the Rentec, you are going to optimize your engine to be more powerful, to run more boost, and it's going to be able to get up those mountain passes at high altitude when your van is fully built out. Trust me, if you drive these things a lot, you realize they can be a little bit anemic. And folks that have had the Rentec tune installed, it takes like two minutes, it plugs into your OBD2, makes a world of difference. Now the other two things I wanna talk about on this van is at the back. Now there's plenty of cool stuff on this van, side steps, side ladder, but these aren't necessarily gonna be world changing for how you use your van storage this sounds silly i get a lot of folks that are like why do you need storage you're in a giant van i i go out in a jeep and you're in a van and you're complaining well the reason is that van's not empty it's full of a bathroom a shower a fridge a cooktop a bed there's all kinds of stuff in there it gets built out and the other thing you notice when you do this a lot is keeping the inside clean is tough so you want to keep the dirty stuff like my shoes right now and all the mud around here. I wanna keep that stuff on the outside. So the cool thing with Owl is we have these carriers that mount to the hinges. They allow you to put 
massive amounts of storage on the back. This is our brand new monster box. We haven't even released this at the time I'm filming this video. <laughs> of course, I'm filming a video and I locked it. We're gonna edit this. With and I unlocked it. So, here we go. This is our monster box. And I'm really happy with this. It's a dual fold box. So this gives you a place to kind of set stuff as you take it out. So what do we have in here? Notice a lot of dirty stuff. Those are essentially um, leveling blocks. Those are really cool. They're called, I think they're called Anderson leveling blocks. If you haven't used them, they're really, really cool. Extension cords, uh, tire changing uh, jack, tool roll. In here, we've got soft shackles, a tree saver, recovery gear, um, air, uh, in, uh, inflation and deflation items. So basically all of the stuff that you're gonna need on the road that would take up, look at the size of this box. Think about how much room this would take up on the inside of your van if you already have a built out van. You gotta carry food and water and clothes and all that stuff. So that's why storage is such an important thing. You've also got the tire out from underneath. If you wanna learn why it's important to pull your tire out from underneath, I have a whole video on that. So you definitely wanna get your tire out from underneath if you're off-roading, it can cause a lot of problems. Last thing, we're also here at the back. Oh, beautiful dirty owl hit step, go way under. This is super important. See that? Now mine are painted blue, most are not blue. I don't know if my finger's in the right spot, but that blue plate down there is a differential skid. Skid plates in general, really good idea to get when you're going off-road because I am actually pretty far from anyone right now. I don't have cell signal. And so you wanna make sure that you don't smash that diff on a rock and then all your diff fluid spills out and you're kind of uh, up a creek without a paddle. Those things are super cheap insurance. The diffs on Mercedes-Benz have a very odd design in that the diff cover hangs down ever so slightly from the main body of the differential. And so what happens is, if you scrape it over a rock, it'll peel it back like a potato chip and all your diff fluid will spill out. Sometimes you can hammer it back, but if your diff fluid has spilled out, you're again, like I said, kind of up a creek. The other thing is, or has nothing to do with off-roading, and that is, if you take your van in for a tire rotation, a lot of folks are trained, not necessarily correctly, but they jack up the vehicle on the differential. On a Mercedes, that can bend your differential uh, housing cover as well and cause all kinds of problems. And so just for cheap insurance, I think it's a few hundred bucks, definitely a diff skid. We also have other skid plates on the van that are gonna protect the other vital parts of the van. So those are just five things that are not as flashy. They're not things that you're necessarily gonna see right away, like a cool um, roof rack with lights or a winch and side steps. Those things all look cool, but we wanna make sure we get you out to the adventure and we get you back. So those are the five things that I think every adventure van should look into. Hopefully you found this video informative. If you wanna see more of our videos, we have a great channel and you can like and subscribe. Thanks so much.